So Killers of the Flower Moon is out now in theaters and I'm ready to talk about it. And there's going to be spoilers everywhere. So if you haven't seen it yet, save this, go watch it and then come back um, and talk to me about it. The decision to open this movie up with a funeral was very impactful for me because it made me uncomfortable for the rest of the movie. We have the funeral where the a group of people are burying a cherished object and they're saying they're mourning, they're burying their old ways or their life as they knew it, not old, but their life as they knew it. And they specifically said that, you know, the younger generation are going to be raised in the white way. They're only going to know the white way. I was watching a very slow death and the pacing of the movie and the runtime enhanced that feeling. I was watching the sy systematic picking off of these innocent people. And the slow death, I feel, was primarily showcased through Molly. We watched her get weaker and weaker and come closer and closer to death. I had the sense of like, when is it going to be over? When is the last breath going to be taken? The first death that I noticed was the names. We meet Molly and Lizzie and Anna and Minnie. I also was extremely uncomfortable while watching the movie because I very quickly got the, the, like, I just felt like the Osage people were surrounded. I can't name really a scene because this stood out to me. Like, in every scene where Molly was talking to her sister or she was talking to her, white people were always around. They were never alone. Even in their meeting where they were talking about the murders, you had Ernest there and Bill there. Like, that 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 it was oppressive like that the presence of whiteness and the and thus the presence of hatred and the the the, the blood the thirsty desire to murder them and steal their stuff was always there they were never alone it's like they were con constantly under surveillance there's also the fact that you know even though there are white people who live in this town as well as the osage people it's not really integrated because there is hatred there from the white people. They hate them for being Native American. They hate them for being, for the chance that happened to them on their land where they discovered oil and thus had control of the black gold. But it's also super uncomfortable because, you know, you realize that, yes, the Osage people are rich, but they don't have any systemic power the system is not on their side not even in the town the sheriff is what white the doctors are what white the most well-known and respected person in town is who bill is what white so they're prey despite their riches they're prey so their their backs are against the wall because these white people are trying to kill them and then they gotta go beg white people in dc molly has to go beg to help them and hope that they actually do something. It is absolutely horrible. It is heartbreaking. And what is also impactful is the fact that the hate that the white people like Bill and Ernest have towards the Osage is not seething hate. It's not like burn your house down. It's this very dehumanizing, like your natural state is death. This is the reality. This is how it has to be. They're doing blood quantums. They're, they're, they're pimping out the white men to marry into the family and creating children because it's not enough that the Osage have allowed white people to like come work the land. And, 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 and there's some, there were some very rich white men in that room when, um, the lawyer was in there and they were telling, uh, Ernest not to, not to testify, um, some rich CEOs who got rich off the oil. So it's not like they were hurting. They had, you know, some white people who got rich off of this, but it wasn't enough for the Osage to share. Bill and his ilk wanted that oil and that oil money and control of that resource to flow through a white bloodline. And so they wanted to breed the Osage out. I was also frustrated while watching the movie because I had this sense, and somebody tell me if you felt the same, like something was missing. Like I saw the interview with the Osage language consultant, Christopher Coat, who, you know, talked about essentially the duality of like, and I feel like this is something that people of color um, recognize, which is like, 
when you choose to subject yourself to a movie about like whatever whether, whether it's slavery but like the suffering the 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 systematic oppression of your people when you choose you work up the guts to subject yourself to a movie like that and it happens to be good for once you know acknowledging that the dual that duality that emotional um not dissonance but like burden of like being like yes this is good like this they did a great job but damn like i wish it was different i wish someone else was telling the story i wish our people i wish the system had allowed had allowed our people to thrive creatively so that we could get to a point where martin scorsese could have um come you know competition for telling this story in the form of you know an osage director i wish the system had would make place would have made place long before now for an Osage director to come up through the ranks and be so well known and so well loved that it'd be a no brainer that he or she or they would be the one to tell the story of their people through their people's um, lens. So throughout this movie, I feel like, like muzzled, like there's a suppression happening. And I, I, I know Martin Scorsese chose to tell this story essentially from the point of view of the killers of the flower and moon from the killers. Um, but I don't know, like I think some, a choice that was made that was the wrong choice is not having Molly say a damn thing about anything that happened. That was a horrible choice that I feel like turns her from, you know, she did a good job. She looked sad for most of the movie. She broke down 15,000 times. Her mother told her, like, you're, you're, you're whitening our family. Her sisters, like, all the pain that Molly went through. And they did not give her a voice to say jack shit about it. I was sincerely confused after she, after she got out of the hospital and she went to pick up Ernest and she was caressing his face and touching him and was like, let's go home. I was like, does she know? Does she know? He was just in court and he was arrested. And why? She went through so much pain. And at every point she turned to Ernest. She turned the doctors away and said, I only want you to give me the insulin because I trust you. And then she finds out her mother was right. And that this, like Ernest has been involved in this plot. And y'all don't let her say anything to him or anybody else. You don't have you don't write a scene. Did it occur to anybody to write a scene? Maybe between her and the Native American member of the FBI, who that that look of pain on his face when he walked into the room and saw her like at death's door was immaculate. But maybe a scene between her and then maybe her and him, and then maybe to keep with the theme, you can have a white person like standing in the corner watching them you know, to keep with the theme that they're always being watched and they're always surrounded and they're never alone and they never have privacy. Molly doesn't get a climax. Molly does not get a climax. Ernest gets a climax, Bill, but Molly doesn't. My feelings on Ernest breaking down over his kid. I don't think it's as simple as that. Well, that was still his child. No, I think it was a performance. I think it was cognitive dis dissonance. Um, Ernest is a directionless evil, unlike Bill, who is purposeful evil. Ernest didn't love Molly, thought nothing of killing her, would have continued until she died if it wasn't for the FBI. So, and he got her pregnant with that child. I'm pretty sure it's that child knowing she was being poisoned. So I think the reason why he was doing all that crap on the floor, I was like, get your ass up, was because, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You heard your child died. Ernest is a coward. He will do the thing, but he won't stand up in it. He won't. And the telling of the Osage murders via entertainment. That was phenomenal. That is a beautiful choice. Sound effects, you know, sound effects, a radio show, lively readings of the script. I'm like, and then you have all, a bunch of white people, you know, a segregated audience um, watching this show and being entertained. Some of them are probably on date night. Um, it's probably a family outing. Being entertained by this very, very tragic event. Immediately, I was like, that's us, not me, not anybody of color, the white people in the audience. I'm like, that's y'all. Like, that's y'all out for a good time. You know, watching this movie. I, I think it was not only talking about the insensit ins insensitivities and dehumanization and the not taking this stuff seriously in the past and just seeing it as entertainment in the 20s, also in the present. And I don't mean in terms of like this movie, I just mean in general, just carnage done to communities of color, black, 
people, Native Americans. The movie is a five out of five. 